Human beings are profoundly social creatures. We are hungry for acceptance, connections, and love. Social media was supposed to connect us, though, but has transpired to make us feel lonely, disconnected, and even depressed. We live in an ultra-connected world. Whatever we desire, we get instantly, superficially. But the fact that everything is so accessible and easy does not mean that we are happy. Because being happy is not in the superficial matter. The fact that we have many people in our social networks does not mean that we belong. I want you to, to examine your reaction when you hear the sound of the beep. And it's your phone, and you've got a notification. Somebody's looking for you. Frantically, you reach inside your pocket, digging to find your phone. And when you take it out, you feel relieved. Somebody responded to your online post. Somebody responded to your text. You now feel loved. The more we pour our time and energy into social media, and the more people respond, this vicious cycle of positive affirmations creates the hooked effect in our brains. We get sucked in to social media, scrolling and scrolling through exaggerated perfect profiles with no purpose behind it. Did you ever try to stop yourself in this scrolling behavior. You must wonder by now, what is the solution for such addiction? Well, in order to know the solution, you don't need to watch my TED Talk. You can open a browser and type in social media addiction. Any research will tell you that in order to overcome the addiction, you have to stop use it or use it less. Some people even go to the extreme of stop using Facebook for 30 days. Guess what happens after 30 days? They're back to being on Facebook. I'm here to tell you today that in order to overcome social media addiction, you have to continue using it, but differently. I want you to imagine a reality where you connect with people online with authenticity. Imagine a reality when you connect your passion with your people. Think about things that you're passionate about. Maybe it's sports. Maybe it's painting. Perhaps it's public speaking. When you connect your passion with people that share the same passion and the same interest as you, you create a sense of feeling like you belong. You know, when I first moved to Canada a few years ago, I moved here all alone, and I didn't know anyone, and I couldn't understand why I felt so disconnected. Why did I feel so bitter? Why did I feel so lonely? And then I realized this is nothing against me. This has nothing against big cities like Vancouver, like New York, like Tel Aviv. People are people everywhere, longing to belong. And then I realized something else. People need excuse to talk to one another. As an entrepreneur and a technologist, I dedicated my career for connecting people online we create platforms that give people the excuse to talk to one another. Rapid online communications, such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram, they give us the illusion of a human touch in the form of a friend me, like me buttons. I want you to think about the situation when you enter the Facebook world. It's very similar to enter, entering the casino world. Imagine an elderly man. He's sitting in front of the slot machine, 
with a blank stare on his face. And he's pulling the handle again and again, unable to stop until he loses his last penny. That same blank stare is on our face when we use the Facebook machine. <laughs> scrolling and scrolling through exaggerated perfect profiles, and we're unable to stop. The more we use Facebook, the more we get depressed simply because we compare ourselves to others, and it makes us feel inadequate. See, the problem lies in the fact that there is a huge disconnect between our online behavior and the way we interact face to face, as it is much more difficult to fake behaviors. But in the land of fake book and texting, we all pose as if we're perfect human beings. Some people even go to the extreme of sexting one another. You know what I mean. Sending revealing videos and photos to each other or online without realizing who is on the receiving end. I remember one day I was involved in an online project, and we had to build a virtual dating app. Can you imagine? Participating in a dating app where you can date anyone. You can do whatever you want, and you will never get caught. The amount of revealing guys' photos that I got were enormous. <laughs> One guy even said to me, I want us to date exclusively online. <laughs> I want us to be boyfriend and girlfriend online. Don't talk to anybody else. <laughs> Me, on the other hand, I was using fake profiles to test the app. I was astonished by the level of delusion people get when they interact online, not realizing that whatever we do online will forever remain on those servers, and it is like a tattoo. It can harm your online reputation and eventually your real-life reputation. See, the existing social networks, the dating apps, the Facebook of the world, they are like fast food. They're cheap, they're fast, they're immediate, and they offer no nutritional value. So what to overcome? Emptiness, well, you need to consume nutritious meal. A nutritious meal in the form of surrounding yourself with people that actually care about you, with your family, with your friends, with people that share the same interests as you. But having a nutritious meal is not enough, because we all crave for that chocolate. That chocolate in the form of the online attention that we're getting. But chocolate can actually be good for you if you consume it in small doses. But if you pig out on the social attention, you're back to being a social media obese and an empty person. Existing social networks are too overwhelming and if you think about dissecting the big social networks into smaller groups and finding people that share the same interests with you, you may be able to overcome this sense of emptiness. Did you know that according to the size of our brains, we're unable to communicate with more than 150 people per group? And such evidence exists in a thing called the Dunbar number, the 150 number by average. You can see such evidence in Roman legions, in hunter-gatherer societies, and effective businesses. You see, we have no choice but to start a movement of authenticity. We need to start being humble in the way we're acting. 
I want you to give you an, another example of the sharing economy. We've all heard of it. Airbnb for sharing a home, car to go for sharing a car. We now have no choice but to be humble in our consumption of things. Yes, we live in an ultra-connected world. Whatever we desire, we get instantly, superficially. And the fact that everything is so accessible and easy does not mean that we have a lot of it. Because resources are scarce, and they're getting more and more expensive. And so we have no choice but to be humble in our consumption of things. But let me ask you, what about our consumption of real human connections? You know, when trauma hits you, when trauma hits you really bad, you have no choice but to look inside yourself and to look at others with the lens of authenticity. The day of realization came to me when I discovered my older brother was dying of brain cancer, and he had less than a year to live. The big online persona I had turned out to be fake the moment I got the news. Out of all of my 5,000 connections, I could barely reach out to five people. I was in a state of despair. I didn't know what to do. But a voice inside of me said, there must be something we can do. And so we found an experimental drug for my brother Roy. But the problem was the cost. It was $10,000 for each treatment each month. How can one pay for that? Well, I thought, not a problem. I'll just rob a bank. <laughs> or instead, make an online campaign to crowdfund the treatments. I had no idea how this would work. I've never done a campaign in my life. And then, rumors spread like wildfire that we are raising money to save my brother. And then, magic happened. We managed to raise over $350,000 within four weeks. How did we do that? We didn't. It was Roy who did it. You see, when my brother was diagnosed, it was too late in the game. He couldn't speak in any normal matter. But before he was sick, he kept his connections in the physical world. My brother was the most popular guy in his school. He was a commander in the army. He then became a film professor and a film producer, and he made award-winning documentaries and TV productions. He was a beloved high school film professor. We couldn't believe how successful the campaign was. And you want to know the reason why? Yeah. Because each and every group was authentically connected to Roy, and they shared the same interest. They shared the same cause. And they created the buzz around their own campaign. All of a sudden, the breeze of loneliness and isolation I felt at the beginning was gone. As so many people warmed our hearts with their generosity to save my brother. On the last day, before I had to go back home, I sat next to him, and I was holding his hand. And although he had begun, become progressively unrecognizable. His outstanding, bright blue eyes revealed an unchanging self. You see, he was saying goodbye to me with his eyes. 
A week after, on October 23rd, my brother passed away. So many people loved my brother because he was a humble man. He was humble in his consumption of real human connections. When trauma hits you, these big social networks, they're not going to help. But if you take this big social network and dissect it to smaller groups, if you find people that share the same interest as you, you can start a movement of authenticity. There's only two things I can leave you with. Find groups that share the same passion as you. And when you find people that actually care about you, take these connections to the physical world and then you can put your phone away. Social media was supposed to connect us all. But if we rethink the way we use it, it will transpire to make us feel like we belong. You know, in the end, we couldn't save my brother. But I can leave you with this. Connect your passion with your people. Start a movement of authenticity. Connect with people in a real way. And I guarantee you that when you need it the most, people will stand by your side to make you feel as if everything will be okay. And you're not alone anymore. Thank <laughs> you.